Hey everyone, this is Chris Crazy House, and I am back for a fan art freestyle. Yes, that's what it's going to be called from now on, is fan art freestyle, rather than just calling it Fan Art Friday. This way I don't have to be tied to a certain day. I can do the fan art whenever, because there's lots more of it coming soon, so I just wanted to change the name of this particular show on the Chris Crazy House YouTube channel, okay? So, today I'm going to be drawing some Koopa Kids, or Koopalings, whichever way you want to pronounce it. But that's what I'm going to be drawing, just a few of them, by the way. So I'll just be doing uh, Morton Koopa Jr., I'll be doing Roy Koopa, and Ludwig Von Koopa. So those three are the ones I'm going to be doing, and I'll talk a little bit about my experience with the characters and my love of the Super Mario game starting with Super Mario 3 where they introduce the Koopa Links. So we're going to be talking about that. Before I get started, let me just say if you are not subscribed to this Chris Crazy House YouTube channel, please do so. And if you like these types of videos like my commentaries or my fan art freestyles or my drawing my butt off videos, go ahead and like those videos and share them with anyone that you think will enjoy them. If you want some more artwork, original artwork that you can download from me, you can go do that on my Chris Crazy House Patreon. It is only five bucks a month to get started. If you want the $10 a month, that will include more higher end stuff like animation and whatnot. Or if you're producing your own video game, or maybe producing your own animation, you'll be able to get those assets in the $10 Ultra tier, okay? But for $5, you can download coloring pages, clip art, and downloadable art for your the backgrounds of your phone, your laptop, or your desktop, okay? So those are the ads for right now, and we're gonna jump right into doing some couplings, and I'm gonna start with Morton Koopa Jr. Okay, I, I, originally, before they created the Bowser Jr., Morton was supposed to be the junior of the Koopalings. He was supposed to be, I think he's supposed to be the oldest, so that means he came first, and that means uh, he was named directly after King Bowser, so I guess they were trying to assume that Bowser's name was Morton at the time. I don't know. <laughs> It's, it's weird how they came up with these names anyway for the kids because many of them were, they're all named after different, you know, music stars. You know, Roy Koopa is named after Roy Orbison, Ludwig von Koopa, that's an easy one, he's named after Ludwig von Beethoven, Iggy Koopa is named after Iggy Pop, the, the punk rock star, so it's... This kind of goes along those lines. They use the names of, of musicians that they liked when they came up with names and kind of characterizations for these characters from Mario 3. So let me just talk a little bit about the hysteria around Mario 3 when it first came out. Because I, I remember that very vividly. That was a great time for me. I was one of the kids that... So I got Nintendo a little bit later. So I didn't get it when it first came out but a little bit later afterwards, maybe like a year or two afterwards that the, the original Nintendo came out. And by that time, a lot of games started appearing and I started buying, or my parents, obviously I didn't have a job back then, so my parents started buying me more games. And that's when I got into the stuff like Ninja Gaiden and Mega Man and Double Dragon. And by the time I really got into games, that's when the hysteria for Mario 3 started. So Mario 2 was out, but I know a lot of us didn't really like that game. That that was just my personal opinion. And you know, going on to find out the production of what was going on behind that game, it's obvious why that was not as popular as people wanted it to be. But that's because it's not a Mario game. That's why it's so different as well. It's, they just use Mario characters to reskin the game okay and basically just they just redid a, a game i think it was i think it's called doki doki panic or something like that and they redid it and put mario characters over it 
and kind of put that out there. That's why the game is so weird. And they, they've since said that this the and story, the storyline is all of that is just a fever dream that Mario had. <laughs> it wasn't. It didn't really happen. So as if the other stuff in the other games is, is reality, and that stuff is the only weird stuff that happens in the dream, right? But when they finally came up with Mario 3, I know the creators, they added a lot of concepts that they wanted to put into the original Mario, but they couldn't do it at the time because of, uh, you know, uh, not understanding fully the technology and how far they could push it. So Mario 3 was kind of like the furthest the Nintendo system could go. This is before they, they jumped over to Super Nintendo and going into, you know, the 16-bit realm. But Mario 3 was kind of like the pinnacle of what you could accomplish with the Nintendo Entertainment System, the original system. So this was a great game. It had a lot of stuff on there. I remember playing it a lot by myself, but also playing it a lot with friends. Like, this is a game that was very community-driven. This was before the age of the internet where we could find out where to go and what the secrets were in the game we had to kind of communicate with each other and we would all play overnight or during the afternoon after school and then we come to school the next day and discuss this is where you go this is what you do i remember drawing little diagrams for people i remember you know sitting talking to my friends on the phone when i could about where to go in certain parts of the game to get to the secrets or get the whistle and whatnot. So there was just a lot going on with that game. And one of the unique things about it is you weren't just fighting the same dragon king monster at the end of each level. You were actually fighting different ones. They introduced his children. So these are all supposedly supposed to be originally uh, Bowser's children. And there are some little badass kids basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I say that with, with all love. That's basically what they were. Just some really bad, bad little kids that you had to face. They had all stolen different uh, magic wands from all the different kingdoms in the Mushroom Kingdom and turned the kings into different weird animals or whatever. And you had to change them back by jumping on their airships that they had and taking those keys, not the keys, but magic wands away from them. So... Just, like I said, the, the game was just very fun. I, like I said, I remember playing a lot of it. I remember just playing it by myself when it was like, it was in the afternoon, I'd be home from school. My grandfather worked at night, so he would just leave for work and my grandmother would be like taking a nap or something like that. And I would kind of sit and play the game for maybe like an hour uh, before it was dinner time. So that, I pretty much got a lot of gameplay and game time with Mario 3. And I, there were times where I just played it just for fun. It wasn't, I wasn't trying to beat it. I had already beat it, but I just wanted to sit there and play it because I just enjoyed finding new secrets, but also just looking at the game. I thought it was a beautiful looking game at the time. I felt the same way about the Mega Man games. You know, that's when, back when you thought that that was as far as the technology was going to go in your little childlike middle school mind. <laughs> you didn't think technology was going to go too much further with video games. You thought this is the best it's going to be. And of course, it's going way beyond that now, but back then you were just happy to play something you thought was so advanced, just what you were looking at on screen. But just hours of fun, I remember playing those. And, you know, sitting here now as an adult, it's fun, like, replaying some of those games. Like, I have a retro system here at the house, and I play these games with my daughter, and she's kind of gotten into Mario over the last couple of years, mostly she likes the 3D games, obviously, like she likes Mario Kart, Mario Party, and like Mario 3D World and Mario Maker and stuff like that, where you can make your own game. So she loves stuff like that. But, you know, she knows where all the original characters came from. And she does like the, the Koopalings. That's one of the main reasons I'm even doing this is because she wanted me to draw some of these characters for her because she saw me drawing some of the Mega Man villains uh, not too long ago so she said can you draw some of the Mario ones for me and I said sure why not if she likes it it makes her happy makes her laugh for a little bit why not you know I'm all about making the kids happy so that's why one of the main reasons I'm drawing these three characters and, and you know these three are my favorite from the game you didn't really get to them until a little bit later in the game first you had to fight like the little Koopalings with the crazy hair and then you fight these ones. These ones a little bit older. 
but uh you know i always liked the design especially roy i always thought he was a, a cool looking character just period in fact he has the shades and you know the, the the purple purple shell and like the pink going on there he's kind of looks like a, a, a late 80s early 90s uh, pro wrestler <laughs> the way he's dressed like this is basically the color scheme that bret hart had back in the day when he was like the champion but uh but yeah that that's that's why I enjoyed about it. I, I enjoy the look of people like the characters like Morton and, and Ludwig. I remember drawing them when I was younger because back then they used to have the Super Mario cartoons as well as like coloring books and stuff like that. So I remember duplicating a lot of that artwork and trying to learn how to draw these characters back then. I would always love getting the little strategy guys or the little booklet that the games came with because I could look at those and they would have the main characters in there and you can draw. You could just use that to practice drawing the character. So of course I did that a lot with a lot of the games. I still have some of those little booklets around here in the house somewhere. I saved them just because I, I enjoyed the artwork in them so much. And I feel like the original artist that created these characters put a lot of great work and imagination. Even though the characters look simple or you know the line work may be simple, I can tell that a lot of work went into the creation of each of these characters and I think they did an amazing job. It's obviously did an amazing job because the characters have lasted the test of time. Even now, the Koopalings still exist in the Mario games in some capacity, shape, form, or fashion. You know, they're either in Mario Kart or they make appearances like when they did that, the DS version of Mario, that they made appearance in that game. So the characters are still going strong and I, I, I appreciate what those creators created even way back when. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing me draw these Koopalings and tell me, you know, let me know what you think in the comment section or if you want to tell a story about your experience with Mario 3 or growing up playing the original Nintendo, please do so. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, Chris Crazy House signing out. Peace.